apple pie. Does it get any better than this? I don't think so. Unless you think so, because nobody cares. Whatever your favorite is your favorite. But apple pie, if it's not my favorite, it's really close to the top. Hi there. I'm Mitchell Moore. I'm a pastry chef from Jackson, Mississippi. I own three restaurants, two Campbell's Bakeries, and one Campbell's Craft, donuts, tacos, and coffee. And today, we're going to make apple pie. That is, of course, if you have already watched my uh, easy pie crust video, because you need a pie crust. Of course, you could go out and buy a pie crust. Sure, that, I guess, counts, but... You know you want to make a pie crust. Come on. So pause this video, look at the pie crust video, make a pie crust, freeze a pie crust, then come back and watch this video where we're going to make apple pie with a streusel topping. Thanks, Mitchell. To make an apple pie, you are obviously going to need apples. Now, everybody talks about the Granny Smith apple and how great it is in pies. And it is great because of the tartness, but I like the honey crisp. It's sweet. I think the sweet tart works out really well. But today I found this opal apple, which I've never had before. So I'm going to cut it up and give it a shot. Now you're also going to need a pie crust. You can either bake your own or use one that you bought from the store. Either way, it doesn't matter. But whatever you do, keep it in the freezer until we're ready to use it. If you watched our Easy Apple Pie Crust video, then you'll already know how to do it. You're also going to need various bowls, a cutting board, an indeterminate amount of flour, an indeterminate amount of granulated white sugar, and, say it with me, an indeterminate amount of dark brown sugar or light brown sugar, you know, whatever, it doesn't matter, whatever you have. You're also going to need unsalted butter. We use unsalted butter in baking, but if you have salted, that's totally fine. If you use salted, don't use additional salt, but if you use unsalted butter, make sure to use additional salt. Ground nutmeg, cloves, ground ginger, lemon juice or lime juice or apple cider vinegar or red wine vinegar. You just need some type of acid. Uh, ground cinnamon. We don't use the expensive stuff in apple pies. There's no need. Uh, you're not going to taste it. There's going to be so much else going on. And I use ground white pepper, believe it or not. If you don't like it, don't use it, but maybe try it. Maybe you'll like it. I think the spicy sweet goes really well. You need a knife. You need a mandolin. That's what this is called. That is what we use to get really consistent slices of apple, and you need some way to peel it, so a vegetable peeler or a fruit peeler in this case, since apples aren't vegetables. All right, so to make our apple pie, the first thing I'm going to do is make my streusel topping. Just, it helps to get it out of the way first, and that way it's ready when I am, instead of me having to stop the apple pie and make my streusel topping. So you can see it's a pretty easy recipe. It is one part flour, one part butter, and two parts sugar. Plus maybe a little salt, maybe a little cinnamon. I don't put cinnamon on mine because I've got it all in the pie, but you certainly can. And uh, we make enough of this that we can have this stored at the bakery and then we can use it as needed which I would highly recommend. Make some of this up, keep it in the freezer. You can sprinkle it on muffins, you can sprinkle it on French toast, you can uh, sprinkle it on a banana nut bread if you're making that at home. It goes well on all of those things. So if you watched our pie crust video, you'll notice that some of this has been grated. But down in here, I also have some pretty big chunks that I cut. I like to have that variety in here it helps to bring the streusel topping together better. Now, did I measure this? You bet your bippy I didn't, because it doesn't matter. It's just butter. What if instead of 100 grams of butter, I made 112 grams? I wouldn't even care if I did measure it. So I'm going to add in 
some flour, probably that much. Is that too much? Maybe. I don't care. Then I'm going to add in the same amount, basically, of white sugar and the same amount of brown sugar. That way I've got one part flour, one part butter, and two parts sugar. This is a recipe that doesn't matter so much about the amounts, it's more about the technique. Um, and then just a touch of salt. And like I said, I'm not adding cinnamon. But then I just start tossing it all together. Unlike the pie, I'm not worried about this getting too hot or getting too warm. Now, these large bits, I am breaking up when I come to them. But if I can do that in the presence of the flour down in here, that's even better. Now I've got a great streusel topping with varying sizes of streusel, which is going to give us a fantastic pie topping. After you get your streusel topping made, you'll have to slice up your apples. If I have to teach you how to slice apples, I'm gonna be pretty disappointed but I will nonetheless show you how I personally do it. You can do it however you want. The one thing that you can't do is use a knife or a mandolin or a vegetable peeler or anything like that in an unsafe manner, cut yourself, and then blame me for your own stupidity. That you can't do. What I do is in the restaurant, I cut off, oh yeah, I'm wearing gloves. I never wear gloves. That's because as these get cut and they have some of the uh, juice, they will get very slippery and having a really big knife next to a slippery apple is not safe. What I do is I first cut off the top, then cut off the bottom. We just eh, throw those pieces away. Then I grab my peeler and we peel it all the way around. It's pretty easy to do now that we've cut the top and the bottom off because the peeler can bite into it right at the top of that peeling and we just spin it as we go, taking it off each time. The rest of it's going to be kind of boring, so I'll just speed through it. Once you have the apple peeled, you can use the mandolin or you can use a knife. If you use the knife, be sure to not cut the core. Leave the core there and just cut down on the outside of it. Turn it, cut on the outside, turn it on the outside, and then once again, you can throw the core away. However, we don't actually do that at the bakery. Again, if you do this, and cut yourself, it is not my fault. In fact, if you sue me, this video will be labeled, uh, what is it, Exhibit A, and this is the point in the video where we are all going to laugh at you in the deposition. Huh? So, what we actually do at the restaurant is we skip the cutting part because it's just one more part. Instead, I take the apple, and I, over the bowl, I cut it until I get down to the core. And then I turn it 90 degrees. Turn it 90 degrees. And then I turn it 90 degrees. And what that does is it protects my fingers because I always have that center part to hold on to. Huh? Pretty smart. So I've got all of my apples cut, but as you can see, some of them are pretty big 
and then some of them are fairly small. But Mitchell, isn't that going to make them cook at different temperatures or different times? Uh, no, not necessarily. They're all the same consistent thickness, so that's really what matters. But let's say that some did cook faster. Are any of your friends or family going to be like, uh, oh, this slice of apple pie that you made from scratch, including the crust, thanks to Mitchell Moore, uh, this, some of the apples are cooked less and some are cooked a little more. It's no good. You don't need that negativity in your life. But you do need lemon juice. How much lemon juice? I don't know. It doesn't matter. You need it to keep the apples from oxidizing, all right, which is turning brown. Nobody wants brown, yucky apples. So how much do you need in here? I don't know. It doesn't matter. If you put too much, you'll just add a little bit more sugar. Done. Then once you get the lemon juice in there, you're going to toss them around. If you have any big pieces like this that are stuck together, separate those out, all right? Because no amount of tossing is going to separate those. Once I get the lemon juice all done around, then we're going to bring some sugar to the party. How much sugar? Don't make me answer that. We're just going to add some. This is now going to macerate this fruit. You marinate meat, you macerate fruit. You know, you take some chopped up strawberries and put them in a bowl and put some sugar on them, put them in the refrigerator, come back and there's that lovely juice at the bottom. That's what we're doing here. What if I use too much sugar? It's not going to matter. Just stick with me on this. Have I ever led you astray? Maybe, but I'm not now. Just add some sugar and the lemon juice. Toss that around and let it sit for about five minutes, 10 minutes, something like that. If you've got something else to do, put, cover this and put it in the refrigerator. You can come back to it later. If you've got enough acid in there, the apples will not brown, so you should be good to go. I'll see you soon. All right, from here, it's going to go kind of quick, so stick with me, all right? We're going to pour some butter over there. You know, it's my actual favorite measurement. Oh, have you noticed that we haven't used the kitchen scale? This is one of the few recipes that I don't actually use a kitchen scale. I'm going to pour some butter over the top. Let me see. I'll put that over here. And then butter and flour make a roux. That's right. Somebody out there got it. Hey, congrats. For the rest of you, study harder. So we're going to add some flour. That was, so apples, this much apples, will probably give up about a cup of liquid. If I were to macerate these and put them in the refrigerator, I'd probably have a cup of liquid when I came back. So I want to use at least a tablespoon of flour, because remember, in a roux, a tablespoon of flour will thicken about a cup of liquid. But I want it to be thicker than that. I don't want kind of a, an apple pie with a gravy on the inside. I want it to be thicker and more luscious. So I'm even going to add more than a tablespoon. What if you add too much? It's not going to matter. Just stick with me on this, all right? That's one tablespoon, that's two tablespoons. And then I'm gonna give that a good toss. Now, down at the bottom, I've got a pretty good amount of liquid from when we macerated these, but that's okay. You may have a huge amount of liquid at the bottom, it's not going to matter. Just go with me on this. I am going to add another tablespoon of flour, and then I'm going to wash my hands after I toss this through. So, some of you may be asking, why do you say it doesn't matter? Of course it matters. It matters how much butter I put in. It matters how much sugar I put in. Normally it would, but stick with me. I'm trying to show you a new method of making an apple pie to where it really doesn't matter because some recipes are going to tell you to use two tablespoons of butter. Some are going to say to use three tablespoons of butter. Which one is right? Neither. It depends on how many apples you have. It depends on how thick you want your, uh, your sauce to be inside of it. It depends on a lot of things. So 
this is not about a recipe. It's about a method. Hang with me. Just trust me on this, all right? So I'm going to put another glove on so that I can toss this through as needed. And now comes my favorite part, the spicing. How much cinnamon am I going to use? Well, my family, we like cinnamon a lot. So we're going to use a fair amount. We also like nutmeg with cinnamon. Those two flavors go really well together. So I'm gonna sprinkle in some nutmeg, not really too much. However, ginger is one of my favorites. So I'm gonna be pretty heavy on the ginger, probably a lot heavier than any of you think that you would like, but when you try it, you'll know better. But what if your family doesn't like ginger? Leave it out. You could make an all cinnamon apple pie. You could make an all nutmeg apple pie. You could make uh, whatever you want. You could leave all of that out and just have the flavor of the apples come through themselves. That's fine too. You see, this is about you and what you like and what your family likes. Mine, we like spicy, so we like ginger a lot. So I put a lot more ginger in there. Then I put clove in, but a teeny tiny amount. In fact, I usually do it in my hand just in case, because um, I have had it happen where I put in too much. That's plenty, trust me. And last but not least, like I said, white pepper. I know you think I'm crazy, but at least give it a shot. And then if you don't like it, send me the leftovers of the pie and I'll eat them. That's a guarantee right there, folks. A um, little bit of white pepper, probably about as much as I made of the clove, which is not much. I just took off my gloves. <sighs> like I said, not the sharpest knife on the wall. Now I've got all of my butter, sugar, flour, cinnamon, lemon juice, nutmeg, clove, uh, ginger, white pepper. I've got all of that in here. How do I know if it's good or if I have enough? I taste it. That's exactly right. Just grab one of the slices and I mean, holy moly, I'm not even kidding. That's fantastic. The white pepper, I promise, really just, it's magic. Last thing that I need is salt. You don't need that much though. With this particular mix of spices, each one brings out something in the other which is what salt does. It is a flavor enhancer, but we're kind of using the spices to do that themselves. But I still put a little, little bit of salt in it. It really will help. So here is our apple-y, buttery, cinnamony mixture. And you can see all of this water down at the bottom, all of that liquid. Now, Mitchell, why doesn't it matter that I have all of that liquid? Because we are going to leave it behind. Grab your apples from the top and put them into your pie crust. Oh, I guess I should actually do it where you can see it. Hold on. Like that. So grab the apples off the top and put them into your pie crust. Keep grabbing. If they're down in there, you can squeeze them out. And I don't know if you can see that or not. Let me pull it up here. If, if your apples are down in there, squeeze them out. Can you see that? Yeah, yeah, you can see that. All of that juice coming out. We don't want all of that juice. We do want some of that juice. But during the cooking process, these apples are going to give up a ton of additional liquid. And because we have our roux made, that's going to capture that delicious liquid and help to turn it into a delicious apple -y goodness kind of sauce, a thick, thick sauce down in the pie. Now, this is my favorite part. 
and this is not a clean part. So don't try to make it clean. Put this on like a cookie sheet or a baking sheet or a big cutting board or something like that because now don't worry if some of it falls onto the board. That won't matter. We're just going to pick it up and use it again. And there we go. That almost got one little section here. Well, I have to say, I am pretty proud and pretty excited because, oh my goodness, look at that. How can you not be excited about that? Now I'm going to put it in a 400 degree oven with a pan underneath it to catch any of the sugar that might drip out for at least 30, maybe 40 minutes. Dun, 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 dun. There it is in all its glory out of the oven and cooled down. Look at that, people. Could you be any happier with an apple pie? I don't think so, but we're not over. We're not done. Whatever. Now we have to slice it, and there is a trick to it. It involves scissors. So the first thing I'm going to do is kind of line up where my slice should be and mark the crust. So if I've got one slice there and I do another slice, say, here, now I've got a little mark on the crust here and a little mark over there. I take my scissors, and remember, we are using a disposable pie pan, so we can snip right through that edge, just like that. Then we can bend the edge of the pie pan down until it clears that crust. Look at that. Now I do have to finish making my slice, and, uh, but then I can peel that underneath it and get my pie server underneath it to come up without worrying about the edge of the pan. Brilliant. Okay, so for this end part, I'm supposed to show you the beautiful piece of apple pie that I cut and then take a bite of it, but I kind of ate it before. So now it's all it's half eaten. If I show you from that angle, you can't tell as much, but definitely half eaten but you guys it's just so good and you can do it i can't wait thank you so much for learning how to make apple pie be sure to show me your creations over on our facebook page uh i think just search mitchell moore or mitchell moore pastry chef or even get out of my kitchen on facebook and you'll find me i guess i can put a link down below thank you to our patrons you guys are amazing it blows my mind uh if you have any questions, again, put them down below. If you have any complaints, as usual, just email them to I love to complain at because I'm a horrible person.com. Thanks. Mm -hmm.